Hi there. Now for this question, we had to find the tension in this string, and it turns out to be 6.53 newtons to three significant figures. So as usual, I'm going to take you slowly through the method, but you might want to fast forward. Okay, so what we have here is what we're given, essentially, the two particles, P and Q, attached by this light inextensible string passing over a smooth pulley. And the plane is inclined at an angle alpha, and we're given that tan alpha equals four thirds. And the coefficient of friction then is 0 0.5. So what I'd want to do is put on the information that we're given, that is that the particle P started at rest and then it moves down the plane. It accelerates down the plane. And so I'd want to mark in those accelerations of P and Q. I'd also want to mark in the forces acting on each of the particles. So if you do that, this is what you should get, okay? I'll just run through what I've done. When we consider the particle P, you've got the weight, which is 4G Newtons. You've got the normal contact force of R Newtons. And you've got the tension in the string, which I've called T Newtons. And because the particle is moving down the slope, friction always opposes motion. And that's going to have reached its maximum value, its limiting value. So it's going to be mu times r, the coefficient of friction, mu times the normal contact force. I've put in zero here because it started at rest, some point up here, say, and then it accelerated down the plane. Now, when it comes to q, you'll notice I've marked in the weight, okay, 0.5 g newtons acting downwards, but the tension here T acts upwards, and it's exactly the same tension as you've got over here. And you always get the same tension, remember, if you've got a string passing over a smooth pulley, which we have, okay? Also, Q is accelerating upwards, and it's got the same acceleration, A, as P had going down the plane. And the reason for that, remember, is because it is an inextensible string. It never stretches. So as soon as P starts to move, Q will also move. Okay, so that's typical force diagram and marking on the accelerations, etc. Okay. Oh, and I, you'll also notice that I've done this dotted line here and we've got the angle of the plane alpha is included in here. That's going to be useful when it comes to resolving. Okay, so in order to get that tension, what I'm going to do is figure out first of all what R is, okay, by resolving perpendicular to the plane. That will allow me then to know what the frictional force is, and then I can resolve down the plane for P, okay, always in the direction of motion. And then I will be able to create an equation with the tension and the acceleration in. I can then go to Q, resolve upwards in the direction of motion, get another equation for tension and acceleration, and then solve those two equations simultaneously to get that tension. So that's the method, okay? So we start then by considering P. So I'll just put consider P here. And what I'm going to do then is resolve perpendicular to the plane. And that means that we've got all of R acting in that direction. Remember, these two forces, the tension and the frictional force, are perpendicular to the direction where resolving in, so they're not going to enter the equation. But the weight here, 4G, has two components. It can be split up into one along the dotted line here and one down the plane. But we're only concerned with the one along the dotted line, okay? The one down the plane will be perpendicular, so it'll have no effect in this direction. 
and because it contains the angle it's going to be cosine 4g cosine of alpha and it's in the opposite sense to what we've got here so it's going to be negative so you've got r minus 4g cosine of alpha and that's our resultant force the particle is in relative equilibrium perpendicular to the plane it's neither going off the plane or going into the plane if you like so that resultant force will be zero and then we can rearrange this and we have that r equals 4g cosine alpha okay i won't work out what alpha is at this stage okay um, we'll just hang on to that now i'm going to look at resolving down the plane in the direction of motion okay always do that so we're looking at applying force equals mass times acceleration here and we have got all the force acting down the plane well you're going to have the component of the weight down the plane and because it doesn't contain the angle alpha let's just put a dotted line in there okay let's just do one from there down there okay it doesn't contain the angle alpha so it's going to be 4g sine alpha okay so what we've got then down the plane is a force of 4g sine alpha that's the component of the weight and then we've got all of the tension and that frictional force acting up the plane totally in the opposite direction to what we're resolving in so that would be minus so you've got the tension minus t minus the frictional force which is mu r mu is 0.5 we've just found that r is 4g cosine alpha so i'll just put that in okay and the was action here is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in so that doesn't enter the equation so this is our total force down the plane and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration well the mass is four kilograms the acceleration we've just called a okay so that's another equation so I'll just border that off there now then what we need to do is put in our values and there's no need to work out what the angle alpha is all you need to do when you're given questions like this for instance is to just draw a triangle that has got the ratio of the sides in something like this okay this is not drawn accurately okay so don't uh, write in and tell me that I've got my sides in the wrong proportion I know I have okay but there's my angle alpha and we've got the tan of alpha is four thirds remember tan of an angle is opposite over adjacent so the opposite side would be four and the adjacent would be three and then by pythagoras theorem you can work out the hypotenuse as being five the famous three four five triangle okay remember these are just ratios of sides now i can substitute my values for sine alpha and cosine alpha into this equation and if you do that we therefore end up with 4g then times sine of alpha and the sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse that will be four fifths okay and then we've got minus the tension here minus t and then you've got minus 0.5 times 4g i'm going to write that in as 2g there okay half of 4g and then we've got the cosine of alpha which is adjacent over hypotenuse that's going to be three fifths okay and that's all going to equal four times a and if you clean this up then you end up with a total of 2g when you look at these two terms here minus that tension and that's going to equal 4a and I'm going to call that equation number one now I said to you that we need to find another equation then with the tension and the acceleration in and that comes from looking at q so if we consider q at this point 
Okay. Then we want to use Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We do that by looking at resolving in the direction of motion, which is resolving upwards. So the total force then on Q upwards is going to be the tension, all of T X upwards. Then we've got minus the weight, 0.5 times G. And that's going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. The mass is 0.5 kilograms. The acceleration is A. Now, at this point, we're going to be doing simultaneous equations. And I'm looking at trying to find out what T is. So I really want to eliminate the acceleration A. And if I was to multiply through by 8 here, I can see that I could bring this up to... 4a, which is the same in equation 1 there. So what I'm going to do here is multiply through by 8, okay? And if you do that, you therefore end up with 8t minus, and 8 times 0.5g is going to give me 4g, and that's going to be equal to 4a. And if I call that equation 2, then all I've got to do next is just do equation 2 minus equation 1. And what does that give me? Well, we've got 8t minus minus t there, so we're therefore going to have 9t. We've got minus 4g minus the 2g here, so that's going to be minus 6g. And then we've got the 4a minus the 4a, that goes to 0. So nice and easy then just to rearrange this and what we end up then is that therefore t will be equal to 6g over 9, 6g over 9, 6 ninths g, which cancels to 2 thirds g, okay? That gives us an exact value or you could take g as 9.8 and 2 thirds of 9.8 when you round it up is 6.53 newtons then to three significant figures. So I hope that gives you some idea then on that kind of question.